Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Golden Ratio Podcast. I am Jin, GR Mom, joined as always by GR Dad. Hi. How's it going, GR Dad? Good. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. yes. The cocktail of the week this week is the Monk's Respite. Monk's Respite. Is that Brody drinking it right now? I would love to make this, but it requires an ingredient that is not obtainable in the Florida Keys. Is it, it is. holy water? No, it does have coconut water, which like we can get out of the backyard. No. Not a problem. Coconut water, gin, lemon juice, honey syrup, yellow chartreuse, and then seltzer water and a dash of orange bitters. It sounds so good, but you can't get chartreuse here. I've That's checked. a weird miss. We have tons of liquor stores, as all the rest of Florida, well stocked with everything except fancy stuff. <laughs> no yellow chartreuse. But so. man, can you get a lot of rot gut stuff. And it's only a quarter ounce of yellow chartreuse, but I think that probably adds a lot of flavor to it. So I mean, it's on there for a reason. Yeah. Anyway, it looks great. We're going to make it eventually. I would buy some yellow chartreuse when I'm up in Maryland, except I can't take it on the plane. Maybe I'll bring, I'll get some like little travel size three ounce bottles and then fill them up with yellow chartreuse and then put them in a quart bag and bring it back. Okay. That sounds good. I mean, I think you've done that before with other stuff. Yeah. What do you, you, dis, you disagree, Guac? Guac, what, what do you have to say about please, this? Please, we're podcasting. We're professionals. Okay, are you ready for Administrative Corner? Oh, I love Administrative Corner, yeah. Excellent. We have two items on Administrative Corner. Yeah, that's great. One is that uh, Friday is the last day to get your Vink plushie orders in. So order your Vink plushies. Uh, links in our bios on all of our I socials. I think they're supposed to ship in July, July 23 or something. Yeah, but you can only order until like the pre-sale ends and then there's like no chance after that there's not yeah. extras or anything and i don't know when it is on friday either if it were a court filing i'd say midnight but i'm not sure it's midnight it'll if you click on the link in our bio it'll show you like the exact number of oh, minutes it's a left countdown yep right yep thing number two is uh we set up a mailing list it's at tiny letter tiny letter.com slash the golden ratio four. the link for that's also in our bio so if you wanted to get off the socials or if you know somebody who's not on the socials who wants to see our pictures, they can sign up for the tiny letter. And so I set up the tiny letter. I announced this last week, like, cause someone was like, is there a way that I can get this if I'm not on the socials? And I was like, we could do that. And so I set up the little tiny letter account and I posted a little, I registered one of my email accounts, like subscribed. I posted a little test picture. It came to my email. Everything worked great. I then posted the link for people to sign up. Like a thousand people signed up. Okay. Great. The next day I go to post the same picture that I post on Instagram and Twitter. And I just take like whatever the caption is from Twitter. And that's the subject line of the email. So the subject or the tweet was consummate guac. And it was this very pic perfect picture of guac. It was sunset guac swimming, wasn't it? Yes, guac like out in the ocean with a beautiful sunset, consummate guac, perfect guac. And so I post on Instagram, post on Twitter, and then I send it on the tiny letter and it doesn't come. And I'm like, this is the first one. I subscribed on purpose so I can make sure this works. I subscribe to everything so I can make sure it works. It doesn't come. And eventually I go back. I'm like, maybe it's just going to take a while because there's like a thousand people. And eventually I go back and it's like... uh this is being held and then i get an email that's like you have violated the security policies and you have to do this and i was like <sighs> maybe it's because like a thousand people all at once signed up for our tiny letter and like that seems suspicious and they think i'm using it for spam or something so i like you have to respond and it like opens a ticket with tech support and i was like hey you know just trying to sort this out i don't know what i did let me know what i need to do to fix it and the person who responded was like, yeah, you know, you were caught in our inappropriate content, blah, blah, blah. Please, you know, tell us, like, what are you using your letter for and how are you getting people to sign up? And like, what other channels do you have? And I, I sort of glossed over the inappropriate content thing because all the questions were sort of like, what is your audience and why are you doing this? And so I thought it must be that we had a thousand people sign up and they wanted to know where it was from. So I responded with all the info and I'm like sharing pictures of my dogs for people who want to get off Twitter and they responded and they're like yeah sometimes our inappropriate content filters like screw up you're fine it's working now and i was like that's twice it said inappropriate content and i 
And sometimes the dogs get flagged as naked people. <laughs> the clock was underwater. They're like vaguely flesh colored. But yeah, he was, it was <laughs> <Naked> like <people. laughs> small guac out in the ocean. That yeah. wasn't it. And then I realized I said consummate guac and they thought it said consummate. Like consummate guacamole. Like consummate our marriage. Or consummate with guac. I mean, that may be illegal in Florida now. <laughs> There's a lot of new rules. Yeah, I don't think you can. <laughs> well, I meant with the dip. It's definitely illegal to do it with the dog and no one had better try. Oh, I meant with the dip too. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, my fancy words uh, very much confused their filter and they thought I meant consummate trying to get a around like a sex filter. And no, it just was the other kind. That's a very complicated way to get blocked. It really is. I th I'm still funny. laughing at the fact. I'm looking at these dogs thinking of them as naked people i mean it is can't be it's the furthest from naked people <laughs> these are if, furry dogs like imagine you still wore glasses and then you took your glasses off <sighs> and they're just blurs <laughs> of that color i guess it's you real could be like there's it's a real stretch <laughs> round roundish naked people look at these go goofballs there's no way <laughs> Brody would be like the very pasty Northern European. <laughs> <laughs> Brody's a polar bear. I know, but if he were all fuzzy and I was like, that's a person, he'd be like, I guess they could be Swedish Ooh, or Irish, maybe. They could be like a German landlord, which is I'm going to talk about later in Rambling. All right. So anyway, uh, it's now fixed. The messages are going out. So if you want to get off the socials or if you just want the picture from the socials to come into your inbox you want to sign up your grandma who doesn't use the socials just but so wants everyone pictures. knows what you're talking about is you will if you sign up for this you'll get one email a day with the picture that you also put that we post to twitter and instagram and with the caption not everyone might know what a newsletter is or whatever what the parameters of this are we're getting one l email a day if you uh, are a person who did not know what a newsletter was and benefited from that clarification please send me a direct message or an email if you like because i believe the population of people who need that explanation I is zero i understand people know what a newsletter is but you kind of launched into this sideways i think you were talking about mailing lists and stuff and it was odd. i just want everybody to like give me an affirmative vote that like yes that explanation from Inga was helpful to me. I didn't understand. Please let me know if that was true. Yes, thank you. I'll pay you all later <laughs> with my <laughs> cash that I'm making on all the merch. Uh. <laughs> all right, it's time for dog updates. Excellent. Also right. good. Not as good as Administrative Corner, but pretty good. So I was out walking Remy this week, and uh, <laughs> this is a good one. Our friend, we have friends at the end of the street, and they have two dogs. One's a kind of doodly dog. <laughs> smaller, though. They're both it's real small. smaller. And the other one is, is absolutely a mix of a whole bunch of stuff, but is a small, like maybe 20 pounds. Not like a chihuahua small, but not as big as a corgi. Mm -hmm. uh, but like maybe it's part corgi, kind of stocky, short dog like that. L slightly odd proportions. Weird proportions. Should have longer legs. Yeah. Uh, but like a pretty small dog. And and they're very nice dogs. And like Vink yeah. has been usually the one walking with me when I see those dogs. And she doesn't really care about the dog. She just wants the dude to pet her. And so <laughs> I was out this week and it was Remy's turn to walk. And they came up and I was like, listen, you know, he's kind of blind and he barks a lot. And the guy's like, fine. And, uh, and so Remy walks up and starts like puts his nose at the nose of the little dog. And I'm like, I don't know if this is going to go well. And then I notice Remy is not wagging his tail. And I'm like, that's really bad. And as I'm registering in my head, that's bad. Here's what Remy does. He rears back a little bit. He opens his mouth like a snake, like dehinges his jaw <laughs> to make it giant. And he goes, ah! <laughs> trying to fit the entire head of the small dog into his mouth which he's about to chomp he's about to chomp it out maybe the entire dog maybe he's going for a one gulp yeah, i mean the dog's not that small this but he's blind sh so shark maybe movie is what you're saying oh my god like, i think he was measuring the size of the dog with his nose to see how far he had to open his mouth to get the whole thing in there i, I mean just absolutely tried to bite this dog's head <sighs> off Remy. uh fortunately while i didn't have time to pull him back once I recognized that he was tense, I was in the process, like already. It's of brilliant. It's like one him. of those seatbelt retention things where you like in a a millisecond yeah. you, you tautened, you you <laughs> tightened the leash 
so that he would not be able to move at all. I walk all the dogs with a waist leash because like Nacho messed up my shoulder and a couple of my fingers. And Vink pulls like a crazy Vink dog. pulls like crazy. So it doesn't hurt me when I have like it, you know, it's like a little loop that goes around my hips and then the dogs clip onto that. It saves me so many injuries. And so I really just have to lean backwards and, you know, then it's like all of my body weight. Your so he cat like reflexes. Saved, saved the dog. Saved that little dog. Head. <laughs> and then Remy was like, ah, rah, 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 rah. and I was like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. And like, dude, dude was super good. He's like, yeah. So you know, you done with school? <laughs> like clearly going like, oh, like he could tell I was upset, and he wanted to make clear he wasn't. And uh, I was like, listen, I'm, I'm so sorry. And he's like, hey, it's what dogs do. It's fine. So he was fine. His dog was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I was like, Remy's now my enemy. Yeah, Remy doesn't seem to care though. Remy has no remorse. No. Uh, and zero learnings the it's problematic because like i was hoping like he's just such a better dog now that he's on the prozac and i was hoping maybe he would actually be a good dog instead of a bad dog but he's a bad dog still as he proved this week but like we got an email from one of the florida golden rescue groups and they're bringing uh like 10 dogs from china this week and goldens like, golden t- yes golden retrievers from china they're bringing this week and they're like we need fosters or adoptive homes for these dogs and i'm like i would like to take one of these dogs except remy 100 percent untrustworthy and we don't know anything about these dogs right they're just coming and so if we get one who's snappy if if remy were a good dog he'd be like what the fuck and like back off but instead we absolutely know now that he will be just like with nacho like try to attack the other throw dog. down yeah, yeah i mean remy is is like the bouncer i mean he's not not good at backing down he's an asshole (laughs) and uh so it's problematic because it would be nice to bring another dog into the squad i I feel like we are in a place to handle a number six uh but remy is like not trustworthy with other dogs remy i tried to give you away when we first fostered you because you're a problem (laughs) he's totally unaffected by any of this not care at all he's like can i you know Am I going to get a snack later, maybe, perhaps? Any eggs? Have you got any eggs? Wow. He's blissfully unaware of this. <laughs> He's in. He is having a very good life. He is, and it's going to be a long one. It's not like we're just going to be able to wait him out. Other dogs get lymphoma, and they get, like, two months to live. Remy? No. He's just going to live, like, a normal life because you took him to Miami for his oncology visit on Friday, and he's doing great. He's fine. The cancer is doing absolutely nothing. Which, like, listen, this is good. I don't want Remy to die. At the same time, I would like him to stop being an asshole, and he's not. Yeah. Yeah. I, w- I was mentally, and I was having, I had to do this out loud because I can't just think. I have to say things <laughs> while I think. Like, he's not the baby, but he, he may be the baby of the whole bunch. Remy. No, he's definitely older than Guac. But we have an estimate on Guac, but we don't know when he was born, right? Yeah, but he's not like two years older than we think he is. Guac, no, he's more likely to be, yeah. yeah. It's probably Guac is the baby. Guac so is the giant baby. What math are you trying to work out here? That was it. Like, who's the youngest? Because for me, Venk is always the youngest, but yeah. she's absolutely not. She's absolutely not. She's right in the middle. Venk, you're a good dog, Venk. Venk, you're right in the middle, Venk. All right. Um, so, yeah, Remy did great on his oncology visit. And since Inga was in Miami, I was like, you know, you should go to Whole Foods. I will put in an order at Whole Foods for you to pick up because we don't have Whole Foods yeah, in the Yeah, and keys. we usually get guacamole. And they didn't have any guacamole. We get some cheese. We get, like, a loaf of bread. Yeah. And Inga gets, finishes, and he's like, all right, I'm going to Whole Foods. And then he's like, there's a lot of bags of groceries it's here. Like 20 paper bags <laughs> in my trunk. It was a lot of stuff. It was so much groceries. No uh-huh. dogs, just groceries. And I give Remy full credit. He didn't climb back there and just like live in paradise for about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Which he could have done if he was real quiet. Yeah. He did not. He did, he was very good. Yep. Uh, let's see. Another dog update. Uh, Vink did a minor escape this week over to the neighbor's house. Neighbors aren't there. Neighbors on both sides are gone now. Yeah, he was disappointed. Sh- um, Vink was disappointed. Neighbor was not there with any was steak. There. Nope. No steak. No jubilation at her presence. Nope. Although she probably sniffed some lizards over there. Yeah. The green lizard is back here in the yard. It's, I mean, I'm sure it's going to appear on the snaps. I didn't get it. Mm. I mean, 
Fink chases it away. <laughs> what do you want? All right. In other dog updates, um, Hopper woke up on Saturday, lick, 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 licking uh, her leg. Hops. Got Ingo up at like five. Um, and she had a ruptured abscess on her one remaining elbow, which is like not ideal hops. So she was in at the vet by like 8.30 Saturday morning to get antibiotics and creams and rinses. Rinses, yeah, and bandages. Fortunately, yeah. it's doing good. It's healing up really well. She cannot swim now. Which kills her inside. Yeah. But helps her outside. She, uh, we, we seem to have caught it early with the antibiotics and stuff. It didn't swell up to like ridiculous proportions the way it has before. It, you keep saying we caught it early, except it was a ruptured abscess. It got so infected that it exploded, which I think whatever early is defined as is we were after that. Okay, so whatever happened, it did not swell up like a whole sleeve. It didn't get swollen, that's true. Like an true. inflated sleeve, yeah. like it has the two or three times in the past. No, it was like a smaller infection, for sure, which is great. Yeah. Anyway, she seems to have kicked... She seems to be on the getting better end. She, and she feels fine, fortunately. Mm -hmm. She doesn't seem to be suffering. That's right. She'd love to go swimming. <laughs> she feels so good. Yeah. She wants to go swimming. Speaking of things that aren't working. I know what you're going to say, and it's not a happy thing. The elevator broke yesterday, you guys. It's not exactly a dog update, but it will affect all dog updates. <sighs> so I was coming up with Brody, and it was like going fine, and then all of a sudden it starts going like going real <laughs> slow making this real sick sound it did get us up all the way to the top i guess technically it still works this happened last time like when it was broken for the two months it did that and then you wrote it down and tried to ride it up and it when you know didn't go very far like a third up which is then you're in the shaft <laughs> yeah <laughs> no i mean good. it will always go down you guys we can never get stuck in there it always will go down even yeah. if the power goes out it'll go down um so the elevator is broken i called so that was last night. So this morning at 8 a.m., right when they opened, I called the elevator place. <laughs> and they're like, well, like the elevator repair guy uh, who comes to the Keys, he comes like two days to the Keys. So, you know, he's here now, but he's booked up and he's on vacation the following week. And then he's booked up the following week. And so like May 18th or some fucking bullshit like that isn't the first time he can <sighs> come. And I'm like, can he listen? Like there's something broken. What we don't want is for him to come and diagnose it and then have to go back up and get the part and have it be another month like this is what you guys did to us in january can you just send him with the parts like and the guy's like you know i could i guess i could send him with a you know one of these a rectifier which is what he's like but i don't think that was i think it was a pump i'm like good send him with a pump he's like oh we don't stock those they're expensive and i'm like then have him come here while he's here to like in the next two days and look at it and confirm that's what you need like he doesn't have to fix it but have him spend the five minutes so he can bring a damn pump down in three weeks instead of us waiting and it's like it's very frustrating it's not this guy's fault who's just like the service manager they like i understand the dude who comes here only has a certain number of hours but like the idea that it's going to be another two months is so frustrating and it's it at least going to be another three weeks i mean we're not going to get it fixed before the 18th because it was, it was, it broke in January and we didn't get it fixed till close to April, right? Yeah. The we don't need to go back through that stupid timeline. It's I just going to make me mad. We don't need to do that. Oh, I don't want that. No. Um, so anyway, the elevator is broken. So good news for me. I get to carry some dogs. <laughs> I love carrying dogs. Yes, you do. And you're good at it. I, it's like hugs. It's like <laughs> giving them hugs. <laughs> and I'm not doing any of it, so exactly the only sad thing is that that means you're on a little bit more of like overnight wake up duty which i usually try to take but um i hurt myself when i try to carry those dogs so yeah and they're knock on wood they've been they've been pretty good um uh, during the night no so that's it for dog updates uh ramblings this week we're gonna call european corner because we have two rambling stories out of europe okay all right story number one Sent to us by friend of the squad, Destiny. Police pull over driver and find 10,000 British pounds of heroin and cocaine. That's like street value and not weight. <laughs> That's right. It's $20,000. Yes. Police pull over driver and find 10,000 pounds of heroin and cocaine, a lamb, and a bag of chips. What was that middle part? A lamb. Like a, a little sheep. A baby sheep. Mary had one? She had a little one. And that's what they found. A lamb in the back seat of this 
passenger car. Police in Scotland pulled over a car and found 10,000 pounds of Class A drugs, a lamb, and a portion of chips. <laughs> why did they list the chips? I could see the lamb, but why would they list... That'd be like pulling me over and going, yes, he had uh, combos in the car. <laughs> the passenger and driver passengers and driver were arrested and the lamb was taken in by a local farmer was well, it taken to jail no no it was taken oh. by to a, to a farm and the farmer took him in uh the driver failed a roadside swab test for cocaine i think they mentioned the chips because there's a picture of this very tiny little lamb in the passenger seat i guess in the back seat passenger seat but there's a portion of chips in front of the lamb <laughs> i don't know if the lamb was eating the chips was he feeding chips to the lamb i, I don't know this is this raises many more questions than it answers, of course. Uh, Why is there a lamb in the back seat of this drug dude's car? Earlier this year, this is just at the bottom. Earlier this year, Essex police found an estimated two million pounds worth of cocaine in a Skoda Fabia driving up the M11. In footage released by officers, the driver can be heard admitting there was, quote, a lot of cocaine in his boot. And a goat. There is no goat. <laughs> A full-sized sheep. <laughs> well, I I'm trying to find out why it had chip. Why You're they making it chips. eep. What's they, that sound called, by the way? It, nobody can hear it except for us. Oh, it doesn't get recorded. Okay, so that's that's European story number one. Uh, European story number two. German court naked landlord doesn't justify lower rent. You this sent this great. to me. Yes, this is great. Berlin, Dateline Berlin. So much about this is German. A German court said Wednesday that a landlord sunbathing naked in the courtyard of his building wasn't a reason for his tenants to reduce their rental payments. The case involved <laughs> a building in an upmarket residential district of Frankfurt, which included an office floor rented by a human resources company. The company withheld rent because it objected, among other things, to the landlord's naked sunbathing. In response, <laughs> the landlord sued. The Frankfurt State Court rejected the company's reasoning, finding that, quote, the usability of the rented property was not impaired by the plaintiff sunning himself naked in the courtyard, which I got to say I disagree about. It said in a statement it couldn't see an inadmissible, deliberately improper effect on the property. Judges were ruling on an appeal against a lower court decision that went in the landlord's favor and the tenant had only limited success overall. They found the tenant had been entitled to reduce payments for three months only because of noisy construction work in the neighborhood. The court said the spot where the landlord had sunbathed could only be seen by the from the rented office by leaning far out the window. <laughs> I think that's what convinced the judges more. It's like, if you guys are leaning way out the window to check out this naked dude, maybe it doesn't affect your business in the same way. <laughs> It also said the tenant failed to prove that he took the stairs to the courtyard unclosed. On the contrary, the plaintiff stated credibly that he always wore a bathrobe, which he only took off just before the sun lounger. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Germany has a whole thing about nudity. In theory, it's all fine mm -hmm. and shouldn't be pr pr prurient or sexual. Mm -hmm. I mean, people sunbathe naked. People do co-ed naked saunas. There's a lot more nudity there. I mean, people like you, you watch like a soap ad and it's like a naked lady in the shower mm -hmm. with, you know, you can see boobs mm -hmm. in a soap ad on TV. Mm -hmm. So in theory, they have decoupled nudity and sex. Which is interesting because but Europeans love to theory. say this. <laughs> Europeans love to parrot this line at me. And I have never been har sexually harassed in the U.S., like I am everywhere I have gone in Europe. It's it's very odd. Be like the sexual objectification from just casual men on the street in Europe is absolutely not something that I see in the U.S. So Europeans like this line of like, no, no, like we don't see breasts as sexual. And I'm like, that is bullshit. Like I like this. I'm sorry. No, no. And there's a reason why that soap ad has boobs in it, too. It's because, it, you know. It Men sells. want to look at boobs. It yes. sells, and and all the magazines, right? I mean, so it's 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 this weird sort of academic intelligentsia that that says this, like, oh, we've decoupled it and it's all fine, but most of the pe 
well, let's be honest, most of the dudes in Germany are still going to be looking at the breasts and thinking sexual. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is probably a double standard. I bet if there were a naked female landlady in this scenario, the judges would have been like, oh, that's inex- inadmissibly sexual. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe they'd be like, well, it's fine because it's a lady. <laughs> Maybe. But they were fine here because it's a dude. So anyway, so I'd, I mean, but but also this naked sunbathing thing is a big German thing. Mm-hmm. Not exclusive, and by far not all Germans would do that. But there is a certain element of Germans who thinks it's fine, kind of aggressively thinks it's fine. Mm-hmm. <coughs> the third item in European corner... I'm not defending it, I'm just stating it for the record. Mm-hmm. The third item in European corner... I mean, it's European because it's Ikea. Fair enough. But actually, it's Japanese. Oh, so yes. remember, like, normally... Like last week, I was like, you know, normally like 10,000 people or 5,000 people send me a thing. But this Spencer and Penny Boston Marathon, like 10,000 people sent me. I guess everybody heard that and they wanted to top it because this (laughs) week, like 20,000 people (laughs) sent me the video uh, from Ikea Japan of a tiny house commercial by Ikea in Japan of Blauhai and his son. Living in a tiny house. Living in a tiny house. So they have a Blauhai like mascot. He wears clothes, but it's clearly Blauhai. He wears a suit. And then there's a smaller Blauhai that's his son living in this cute. tiny house. <laughs> it's very funny. Uh, I mean, anytime there's a thing with the Blauhai mascot in Japan, lots of people send it to me. But this commercial was really making the rounds this week. And, and everybody on Twitter, even like my professional Twitter people were like, hey, Jen. This seems relevant to your interests. It's Which cute. it is. I love that people send me this stuff. It's cute and wholesome and blow high. Yeah. 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 And he's wearing little outfits. Yeah. They're, they're both they're wearing very little cute. outfits. Very cute. Yes. They seem very joyous about this living in their tiny little house. Uh, so there you go. That is rambling slash European corner. Excellent. It's time for Taste of the Keys. It is. So we got an update from friend of the squad karen about our story from last week which was the guy at the air show arrested for smoking pot laced with fentanyl yes at the air show on the navy base so karen says i was listening to the squad cast <laughs> on my commute today and wanted to share did we, some did we miss i've been calling it the podcast or did we have we just not used the word squad cast has to stick I'm still not used to it, though. I'm not going to call it the squad cast, but what? I support everybody else doing it. I don't do like puns and plays on words like that. It's going to be the name. It's squad cast TM. <laughs> no, no, no. You can't fight this. <laughs> I'm, I'm fighting it. Oh. I'm just not. You guys can. I, I love people calling it the squad cast. I am just not going to call it the squad cast. If you call it the Squadcast every time, maybe it will end up sticking, but you don't. So I kind of win by default. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I just forget. All right. Well, so Karen was listening to the Squadcast on our commute. Wanted to share some info with you and Ingo and Taste of the Keys about the guy with the fentanyl-laced, quote, fentanyl-laced marijuana. Um, the short version is that there could be traces of fentanyl, but not enough to constitute intentionally laced Fentanyl burns at a much lower temperature, so it would be counterproductive to combine it with pot as it would burn off too fast. Also, the field tests the police tend to use to make these claims have incredibly high false positives. Just thought you should know more things cops say slash do to make things worse than they are or need to be. So I thought that was pretty useful information. This is just generally part of this fentanyl panic that cops have, where it's just like, oh yeah, I touched the fentanyl and like I overdosed and died. That did not my whole that family works. died. I of stopped an overdose. doing that. Stop, stop that. Stop Sorry, making those sounds. I thought it was pretty good. It was, that was terrible. No, it was, I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> uh, okay, so there you go. That's our it's it, change of the keys. Really update on last time's change of the keys. Ooh, yeah, this is good. It's like a update to an update. Guac has just walked up to the couch with his blow high. Which anniversary of the Conch Republic is it? 41, I think. It was 82, right? Yeah. Nice math. I, I'm good at arithmetic sometimes. Uh, yes, it's Conch Republic Independence Celebration Week, mm-hmm. um, where the Conch Republic declared, it seceded from the United States, declared its independence, and um, declared war on the U.S. by breaking a stale loaf of Cuban bread over the head of a Navy sailor... <laughs> Immediately surrendering and demanding one billion dollars in foreign aid from which the US is still government. we're still waiting on that foreign aid. Has not by come. the way, has not come. Yep. 
All right, you ready for German word of the week? Oh, I am. To- I better be. Tohu va bohu. Wait. Oh. Tohu va bohu. What a roll reversal. What kind of tohu va bohu are you, <laughs> are you perpetrating here? Tohu va bohu. Wow. I'm just extremely proud of myself that I can say it, make yeah. my mouth make those sounds. They're good. Tohu va bohu. It's you your can, word. You've been muttering it all day. <laughs> tohu va bohu. Tohu va bohu. <laughs> yep. Tohu va bohu. Tohu va bohu. And it means total chaos or like chaotic mess or it can mean yeah just mayhem mayhem and foolishness mayhem and foolishness vabohu but like if someone goes into like a kid's room and is like clean this up it's total tohu vabohu in here clean up this tohu vabohu yeah i actually looked it up and it's from genesis yeah it describes the condition of the earth before god made before day one and so in German, I think it's one word, tohu va bohu. Yeah, I mean, it's onomatopoeia, right? I mean, it's just supposed to just, uh, well, I guess it's a Hebrew word. So never, it does not, yeah, stop doing that. onomatopoeia. I was just proud of that I could pronounce and refer to that. You also said that, that wrong. You said it wrong. Oh, yeah? Yeah. We say oh. onomatopoeia. Maybe in German, it's different. Oh, yeah, that's right. So tohu space W-A hyphen bohu or tohu Vavohu is the ancient Hebrew from Genesis that describes the earth before the creation of light. What would it be on? Let's say it were on a monopoeia. For what? Like, what is the sound? The, a messy room does not make the sound tohu vavohu. No, but you could have like, you know, six kids wrestling and four dogs and three cats. And all it sounds like tohu vavohu. Kind of. Sort of. All right, fine. <laughs> it sounds chaotic. The word sounds chaotic. What did someone said? It's sort of like hullabaloo or hubbub. Hubbub. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in meaning, sort of, right? Yes. Yes. Which is also, you're saying not onomatopoeia. <laughs> hullabaloo. Hubbub. <laughs> hullabaloo comes from the first records of hullabaloo comes from the mid 1700s it may come from a rhyming combination of the interjection of halu and the scots word baloo meaning lullaby hullabaloo is a far cry from a soothing lullaby though (laughs) says dictionary.com that's like something i would write (laughs) that doesn't make a lot of sense dictionary.com they say that originally may have been halu balu like hyphenated h-o-l-l-o hollow hyphen ballo yeah hollow ballo ballo. okay that gets you to hollow ballo yeah it doesn't help explain the meaning much though tohu va bohu (laughs) germans i mean when i was using it all through my life which wasn't that often it's a bit old-fashioned um i did not know it was ancient hebrew no you learned that like an hour ago i did today i learned i was this many years old i was today today years old, years old. <laughs> yes <laughs> all right uh it's time for ingo corner yeah i learned a, a new english word on tiktok oh what desire paths that's not a word that's two words i know it's a phrase but it's an actual phrase that like city planners use and stuff architects city planners it's where you have sidewalks and then people cut across one sidewalk to the other one and there's like just a dent like a little deer trail, a but path. it's a people trail, and then yeah. that's a good place to put a sidewalk. Yeah, well, like on campuses or something where like the yeah. the planners are like, we'll just make a path around the outside of this rectangle, and then everyone cuts across the middle, and you have this like X forming because no, the grass doesn't grow there. Yeah. It's called a desire path, and yes, it would make more sense to put the path there. Yeah. Because if you don't, people are just going to go there anyway. Indeed. So there you go, desire paths, which sounds probably more interesting than it is but it's also pretty interesting do you mean more sexual than it is love more amorous (laughs) i think it's got it's connected to love not sex love (laughs) maybe they want to walk through the woods and look at the trees and that's their desire (laughs) it's not that funny definitely (laughs) thinking about different things there yep i Uh, was definitely apparently (laughs) All right, everyone. Well, thanks for listening. Uh, And until next time, Slava Ukraini, and don't bite anyone unless they ask you to. That's right. Bye. Bye.